Hercules Gomez, we are joined by our good friend Alejandro Moreno to help us out with all the latest around Major League Soccer and indeed the U.S. men's national team good as friend. well here good as we friend. kick off 2020. Wow. I am, uh, you know, Amigaso. It's a new decade, hey, Ale. With you, Seb, acquaintances. Herc, no problem. You, uh, not so much. There you so go. Mike, let's get to the uh, the first big item of news on today's schedule, and that is Inter Miami at long last, gentlemen, finally has their first ever head coach. It is none other than Diego Alonso, the 44-year-old Uruguayan, comes up from Mexico, where he had been coaching last with Rayados of Monterrey. He won a CONCACAF Champions League with both Monterrey and Pachuca, won a Mexican League title with Pachuca. Though his last job with Rayados, he was fired in September after a surprisingly bad run of form with a very, very good Rayados team. Ale, I'll start with you. Direct question, was this the right hire for Inter Miami? I'll tell you what it was. It's a secondary hire by Inter Miami. I don't think that he was the main target. There was mm. conversation of Santi Solari. There was the name of Patrick Vieira being thrown around. There were other names that seemed to be on the table before Diego Alonso came aboard. In fact, when Diego Alonso came aboard, it's like, huh, who, what, where did he come from? Now, people make the connection to Liga MX, and those that know Liga MX and are familiar with Liga MX, of course, will say, well, of course, Diego Alonso, Rayado, Pachuca, so on and so forth. But those that are not familiar with Liga MX may have said, wait a minute, we were told all sorts of different names with a lot bigger profile, at least in terms of the perception from the outside looking in, he seems like the guy that was left of all the other choices that they went after. Hurt, could Miami have done better? Uh, you'd have to assume they could have done better. I mean, everything we were promised or we've been hearing was this, these big market names. And Ali mentioned a few of those names, so that leads me to believe he wasn't the secondary choice. He was a third, fourth, maybe even fifth choice. Now, you're right, Ali. If you're looking at Liga MX, this is a proven, efficient coach. But he's not a proven winner. He's not a coach who go out, you go out there and you're going to say he's going to get you a title no matter Her, what. What about In the fact, titles? He won with Monterrey Pachuca. With he won the, with Monterrey. What do you mean he's not a proven winner? Hold on, hold on, let me finish, let me finish. In fact, if you go out there and you look at what he did in Monterrey or what he didn't do with one of the richest rosters in all of Latin America, Diego Alonso's time in Monterrey was categorized as an utter failure, both on and off the field, how he implemented his style with his players, how he uh, had that tacto, that, that player treatment, how it didn't go well. There was talk of uh, turmoil with the, the likes of uh, Dorlan Pavon in Monterrey. This is a guy who's got a very effective style, but by no means is it aesthetically pleasing with what we were promised with Miami. Now, enter Miami you think of the owner, David Beckham. You think of what they were telling you they were going to do. This, this, uh, this not reactive soccer, this proactive brand of football. Everything that they've been all of a sudden doing, the hire now of Diego Alonso leads you to believe it's going to be a very defensive team, sit behind the ball, play to the error of the opponent, and counter out with speed, counter out with pace. It's not exactly a modern type of football. You guys mentioned some of the names that were linked to this job. A couple others, Marcelo Gallardo, we mentioned already Santi Solari. Carlo Ancelotti was listed here. Uh, our own Mark Ogden reported that Miami was, quote, confident that they could get Patrick Vieira for this job. Ale, do you think Vieira would have been a better fit? Well, I think so. A guy that actually knows the league. You know, see, it, it, it's one thing to be familiar peripherally with the league. And it's a, another thing entirely for a guy who has actually coached in Major League Soccer and has had success in coaching Major League Soccer. And certainly that's the case for Patrick Vieira. For me, I just think uh, in, in looking at Inter Miami, here is a, a, a situation in which you have an expansion team. And for any of these coaches, would have been difficult to figure out how is it that they fit into the ideas into a group of players that is just getting together for the first time in preseason? That's a challenge for anybody around the world and certainly for people that are not familiar with Major League Soccer. And so, yeah, Patrick Vieira would have made sense. He still would have had a hard time figuring out, okay, what is my best group of players? What is my best 11? All those things that you try to work through in preseason. But as anybody who has gone through an expansion team, and I've participated in one myself, it is challenging to essentially say, hey, what's up? What's going on? For the first time, when you show up and actually meet these players at the start of preseason, that's a challenge enough. Now, when you bring somebody who's not really familiar with Major League Soccer, who has not actually coached in Major League Soccer, then that makes it even more challenging. And so, 
Inter Miami and their expectations as to what they were supposed to be and what they're going to be, I don't think those things match up. And so I actually don't mind a guy who's defensive coming into the league because let me tell you, you're going to have to defend well in order to have an opportunity to win right off the bat. And the expectation for uh, expansion teams nowadays is different than what it was years ago. Now you see the example of Atlanta and you say, well, everybody can be Atlanta. Well, mm. not everybody can be Atlanta. And so what those expectations are, what they were supposed to deliver and what they're going to deliver, I think it's going to be two different things. Let's talk about those expectations and let's take a look at the roster that so far Inter Miami uh, have put together. And some of the names will be very, very familiar to MLS fans. Guys like Luis Robles, Roman Torres, Juan Agadello, Lee Wynn. Uh, Matias Pellegrini is their one designated player. He kind of fits that Miguel Almiron mold. Bought for about $8 million, just around the same price range neighborhood as Almiron and is figuring to be the kind of creative impulse there for Inter Miami. Herc, we talk about expectations and as Ale pointed out, you can look at teams like LAFC and Atlanta. There's immediate success. When you think of what we know so far about Inter Miami, is this more LAFC Atlanta or is this more in, I'm just focusing on year one, is this more Minnesota Cincinnati? I think it's more Minnesota or Cincinnati. I mean, slowly but surely, the spine is taking shape, Sevy. but this is still, we don't even have an 11 yet. You're talking about preseason starting right around the corner of Major League Soccer, and I'm with Ali about how difficult it is to start a franchise from the ground up. The only difference nowadays is Major League Soccer has changed. When Ali and I were around and they had these expansion teams come about, you had an expansion draft. So all these players you were putting in were pretty much player 11 through 14, 15 from other franchises. I actually feel you have a leg up now if you're a, a new expansion team because you get to start from scratch. You don't have these uh, rosters, these contracts that you so need to unload. So what does that say about Inter Miami? You have a leg up, Herc, and you're saying they're going to be more like Minnesota and Cincinnati. Is that a failure by David Beckham and his ownership group? Yeah, I think so. I think at this moment it is a failure because you talk about how soon Major League Soccer preseason, preseason will start. Inter Miami right now, I mean, they just got their coach and they have a handful of players at their disposal. Where in the next few weeks are you going to fill in the spots, fill in those rosters that Ali says uh, you need these players? If Patrick Vieira is a coach that would have been great because he has MLS experience. Where are the rest of the players that have that experience that can now guide these new uh, players coming in, tell them what it's all about, be there for them, uh, filling those gaps, so to speak. Here, here's the other thing, here's the other thing that I would say, is that you're looking at the players that we just mentioned for Inter Miami, and while you can make the argument that there is plenty of experience there, you can also make the argument of these are players on the decline. All of them are. All of them are on the decline. Somebody other, didn't want them, right, Alan? Other than Matias Pellegrini, all, the other players are guys who, look, they had a great run wherever they were, and now not so much. A guy like Juan Agudelo, well, we're still getting, uh, hoping for the best he's of Juan Agudelo. He's still got the youth on his side. Is, well, yeah. Yeah, apparently, apparently he's got the youth on his side, but does he <laughs> have the playing ability on his side? See, the, for me, it's, it, it, it's looking like a team that is, even though the, you don't benefit from the expansion draft, as, as Hercules was just talking about, well, I do think that this is looking at lot like what the uh, what the roster would look like if there had been an expansion draft. Is uh, guys who have been in teams before, they're getting older, their contracts are now too expensive for for an expense for 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 a team that does not want to resign them. And so here you go, somebody else take the responsibility. So you can sell it and spin it as. We are building with experience, we'll be, we're building with know-how, with guys that are familiar with the league. Or you can take the other approach and say, yeah, this is a bunch of old guys that nobody else wanted. Look, they're playing their games in Fort Lauderdale to start. There is no superstar designated player on this team. They named their coach two months, two months before opening day. Simply put, Ale, is Inter Miami ready? No, they don't have a team. <laughs> they don't have a team. Hercules and I right now could, could do a job because, hey, guess what? We're better than the guys that are not even there. I'm just, I'm just telling you, if you don't have a team to play, no, you're not ready. So they have a lot of work to do in this next couple of months. Herc, are they ready? No, no, how could they be ready? I, you know what's very important here? You look at Atlanta United and how they started. Their first player, do you remember who the first player they signed was? Do you remember that player? 
Kenwin Jones, do you, remember, do you guys yes. remember that? And what happened? Tata Martino comes in after Kenwin Jones. He's like, I can't play if my number nine is Kenwin Jones. So then Tata Martino starts deciding who he's going to get, who he wants, how he's going to play, the identity of the team. Well, now you've already made a handful of signings, and now you have Diego Alonso who's going to come in. Maybe these aren't players that Diego Alonso can realistically play with because if Diego Alonso plays a system, let's just say, where he's going to press high up the field, maybe Roman Torres isn't your center back. If he's going to have a dynamic, uh, counter-pressing type of team. Maybe Juan Agadelo isn't going to play in that front line. These are things that now the coach has to come in and say, I need this. This is my identity. And by the way, Fort Lauderdale, how did Frisco work out? How did Bridgeview work out? Uh, the fact that they're not in Miami, I think definitely hurts the identity of this team starting year one. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.